Well, hello and welcome once again to a New Beginning in Christ Ministries. And uh, praise God. I hope we got a, a good program for you today. You know, uh, we're living in a time when things are in upheaval. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know how to say it other than the fact that when America turned their back on God and took God out of our schools, uh, took God out of prayer out of our schools, uh, it changes things. We need to put God back in our society. And uh, until we do, until we put God first, we're going to have all of this turmoil that we're going through. Are you ready for another shock? What's that? They're taking God out of our churches, too. Well, that's true. Uh, And I think this is dating our program, but praise God, uh, I truly believe that this virus, uh, not the virus itself, uh, I believe that... To be quite honest with you, I believe that was a planted thing worldwide that came out of China. And China, uh, the president of China, uh, has declared that he wants the whole world to be under China, under China rule. And he's doing everything that he can to bring that to pass, trying to control the virus, putting out new strains of the virus. I think they had a vaccine for it before they ever turned it loose on the world. James, this is chemical warfare. Of course it's Our government won't warfare. acknowledge Trump did, but uh, I wish that the government would, de- would declare war on them because they have attacked us. Well, I think one of the primary things is that uh, in taking God out of the United States, politicians are the very ones who brought in this virus to Mm -hmm. be used to control the American people. And that, one of the biggest things that that socialism, communism, all that has to do is to get rid of the churches. Mm -hmm. The virus is a tool. And that that was a tool to Mm -hmm. control people. Well, and everybody around knows that you could could get a ticket or be fined uh, and even run out of your church just if you went to church on Sunday. Mm -hmm. But you could go to a Walmart, you could go to a bar, you could go to a ball game, you could have abortions and all that, and none of that was ever stopped. Uh, The primary target of all of this has been the church, to destroy the church, to get rid of God. And then even to the point of when you came down with the virus, even if you didn't go to church, you would turn around and say, well, why did God let this happen to me? Say, well, praise the Lord. Uh, everything God does, he has a purpose for. Doesn't, I'm not telling you, God will never make you sick. That, that just doesn't happen. God does not destroy. God doesn't curse. You just, the, we talked about this last week. Yes. It's the choices that you make in life that determine what's going to happen to you. Praise God. You can't blame God. You can't blame, I can't blame Carolyn. Mm-hmm. She can't blame me. We made the choices that we have that have brought us to this place. Praise God. We chose uh, uh, to welcome Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. For, and let me just say this. Savior means that I have a place in heaven for eternal life, where it's going to be a great place to live. Praise God. That's a choice that I made. We chose to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The Lord part means that he is my master. That doesn't mean he's a Simon Legree, praise God. He is a master who takes care of those that he has. We're we're his servants, if you will. Well, gee, I don't want to be a lowly servant. Well, you're not. You are a heir in the house in the mighty mansion of God praise God and you are have everything that Jesus has when you accept him as Lord it's just the fact that I want to serve 
Jesus. Mm -hmm. I, my desire in my heart is to please him. I mean, if I were a person who had maids and, and servants and, and all these things around me, I would like to be able uh, for them to know, well, Brother James likes this to eat on Monday. Uh, Brother James likes this to eat on Friday. And all I have to do is just sit down and they bring it to me. Praise God. I mean, now that that's the kind of servants I'd like to have. Well, don't you know that God wants exactly the same thing? He wants a servant who is whose desire is to please his master. I hope y'all can receive that. I'm, I'm not talking about being slaves like working in the cotton fields or picking cotton and getting beaten and hung and all that other stuff. I'm talking about a servant who is treated like he is part of the family because we are part of the family. Praise God. And you get there, once again we talked about, by the choices that you make. <laughs> There's a lot of times I wish I could blame Carolyn for some of the things that happened to me, but I just can't do it because I'm the one that made that choice. Praise God. You know, you're talking about the choices, and there are consequences to every choice that you make, good or bad. It's going to be there. Something's going to happen. The United States has chosen to murder their own children, over 60 million. I know you've heard me say it before, but, you know, can you talk too much about this subject? Can it mean any more? <coughs> so what do you think is going to happen when you, like he's, Brother James says, take God out of every part of your life and walk the way of the flesh? You think things aren't going to happen to the United States when they walk like that, when they choose evil, make bad choices instead of the good choices? I believe that's the reason we're in uh, most of the mess we're in now. Amen. And you're right, Sister Carolyn. And you look at this on a national basis. Well, look what's happened to our country because we've taken God out of our, of our daily life uh, and everything. Praise God. You can't even find a gospel station anymore on radio. Uh, and you have to be very specific on television to, to find a, a true, and I say a true uh, gospel station, a, a one that's sold out to the Lord. Not in it for the profit, uh, not in it mm -hmm. for the big mansion, not in it for the big jet, not in it for the Rolls Royce type thing. I'm talking about ministers, praise God, who have a program who reach out and and talk about Jesus Christ. You mm -hmm. know, it's, I, I hear people talking about preaching about well, here's how you're supposed to live, here's here's this, here's that, and all like that, and I'm I'm just not hearing people talking about Jesus. That's right. And that bothers me a lot because that's what preachers are supposed to preach about. They're supposed to preach about sin. Mm -hmm. uh, they're supposed to tell you about if you sin, here's what's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, and that, see, you don't hear that in the United States mm -mm. because the devil's done everything he can to take that out of our society. And, and let me just say this. He's been very successful about it. I see these programs, they talk about young people coming to the Lord, and I'll be honest with you, I mean, they're sitting there raising hands and dancing and doing all this other stuff, and the drums are beating, and they're having a big time. And then I watch television the next day, and they're rioting in the streets, burning houses, burning things like that and everything, and I'm going, oh, are there these the same children that I saw? on the Sunday program, mm -hmm. praise mm -hmm. God. Well, I'm satisfied that a lot of them are because they have a good, let me just say this, and I get in trouble for it, but a lot of children, young people, uh, teenagers and young adults, praise God, are going to these big things. It's like a party for them. Yeah. I mean, they're going in there just, having a big time, praise God, and, and, I, and you should have a good time in the name of the Lord if that's the reason you're there, praise God. But so many, it's just an, an extension of the, the, I'm telling you what, when you've got lights, solar lights, what do you call them, uh, those lights they use, uh, well, strobe lights. Strobe lights, You've got yeah. strobe lights going, and you've got uh, the black you, lights, the, and the yeah, smoke. black lights, all this other stuff, that's, that's flesh. That is pure flesh. That has absolutely nothing to do with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Praise God. And, 
Uh, you know, I thank not. God for these other smaller churches uh, that are preaching God. They are preaching Jesus. They're still around. It's just they're so hard to find. But there are still some. There's some in our community right here. Uh, before we go any further, we need to announce uh, the singings are kicking back up. Oh, yeah, praise the Lord. We're going to talk about that. Before you get to that, though, uh, well, uh, go ahead and, and, and announce that, All right. Sister Carolyn. Starting February, and this is 21, <laughs> 2021, <laughs> starting February on Saturday, uh, Saturday the 27th, we're going to kick off uh, at 3 o'clock right here at our place at 6450 Riddle Drive. We're going to start kicking off a singing yeah, at 3 o'clock. And, and it's gospel singing. It's gospel. Uh, gospel. Um, bluegrass well, gospel is okay, but um, we're not going to get into Hank Williams and those things unless it's uh, some gospel. of his gospel He's songs. He's got gospel Praise songs. Out. Keep it gospel. Keep it live if you can. Yeah. And then uh, Sunday, the Belfont uh, Church, Baptist Church, yeah. uh, they got a new pastor. Is it T.L. Harris? T.L. Harris. Yeah. And, and his, his wife, wife Barbara. Barbara. Yeah. Uh, they're doing their singings, um, and this is going to be the 28th. It'll be Sunday uh, yeah. at 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock, yeah. It goes for a couple hours. Yeah, There's we more. have, we sing I around tell a couple you, of times. we yeah. have a good time. We do, praise God. And that's what it's about. When you go to church, you go to church to worship God. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what church is about. It's not a party. Uh, mm -mm. Praise God. It's, it's, it's coming to serve the Lord. You are servants of the Almighty God. Hallelujah. I love the fellowship. <coughs> you know, that is important to me. The preaching, the teaching, the fellowship, and the spending time together, that's where you bond. You know, let me say this, too. Uh, I, mean, I'm, I think probably next week we're going to talk about healing and faith mm -hmm. again because we need to talk about faith because you are, because of what you've allowed yourself to be. Praise God. But in, in saying all this, praise the Lord, we are we control our life. We're the ones who do this thing. And I'm I'm seeing when this virus thing came out, oh well they said, Well, you know, we're gonna close the churches and then well, we're gonna have parking lot churches and then well we're gonna have the visual church where people can just watch it on T V. Well most little churches don't have T V. No, they they don't. don't have a program like that, praise the Lord. And so what I'm saying, churches that went from 100 now are down to 10. Mm -hmm. Or less. Or less. And, uh, and people are saying, well, that's okay. You know, I'm getting mine from TV. Well, who's TV? What program are you watching on TV? I hope you're not watching uh, the, the Copelands. I hope mm -hmm. you're not watching the, the Benny, Hens. Benny Hens and things like that who are primarily doing this for money. Uh, prosperity teaching. Mm -hmm. Praise God. I mean... How can you watch a program like that and dedicate your time to watching it and still be poor? And you're pouring in your $20 a month or, or whatever it is that you're sending in and you're not being blessed. Why? Because, well, God doesn't bless that type of action. God blesses when we are dedicated to coming together. Uh, when the government tries to stop people from coming to church, that, that was a program. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get us out of church, praise God. But Jesus, very, Paul told us, said, do not forsake the assembling together, the coming together. You can't use the virus as a reason for not going to church. Or gathering together. don't have to be in a that's building, it. church building. It don't have building. to be in a building. No, we I gather mean, here for a Bible have, study. That's it. You can have church under an oak tree someplace, praise <laughs> God. But gather. Wherever. But you come together in the name of Jesus. This mm -hmm. fear. See, that's what the government's using fear. The devil's using fear to control what you do and where you go. And if he can keep you out of church long enough, he knows you won't go back. Yeah. You'll get... And, and let me tell you also... You'll turn off the church program on Sunday morning to find something else that you'd rather watch, a movie or something, praise God. Well, having said all that, praise God, we're talking about satisfying the flesh. And praise God for dedicated Christians who are still going to church, who are still worshiping the Lord together. The battle's still going on. That's right. It has not stopped just because mm -mm. of some virus that the government introduced to control the people. And I'm said it, and I believe that, praise God. 
I don't believe this is just something that happened. It's a flu, like all the other flus. It's introduced. Uh, but anyway, we've said it over and over. But yeah. right, I agree with you. Praise the Lord. God, this, let me just say this also. God allowed it. Why? Because of the sin in the world, God allows the devil to do certain things. Because let me tell you something. The devil can't do anything unless God allows it. So, praise God. God allows things. If, we, if you want to live in sin, then you have to understand that you are going to also live in the effects of sin. That's right. It's a choice. Whatever you allow in your life, once again, choices, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to live with the effects of, of what you have allowed. Praise God. Well, we're going to get some music. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, once again, we want to wish everybody a happy birthday that's had a birthday and an anniversary and those things. And, and thank, once again, hallelujah for all the people that watch yeah. us. We do our best to tr preach the truth. So I know we step on a lot of toes. Praise God. But that's all right. God will heal them. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. So we're going to go to a little music and we'll be right back. God bless you. that I'm unworthy to call upon your name all my life I've been a sinner and for that I am ashamed but I heard that you would listen so I'm giving you my plea I'm too unworthy, Lord, to come to you Could you please come down to me? Hallelujah I know that there are others Who could offer more than I I promise you I'd understand If for me you had no time I think I'll just hit bottom And I'm looking up to see I'm too unworthy, Lord, to come to you could you please come down to me? Sing it, Aaron. I guess I must be reaping From the seeds that I have sown Oh, and Lord, you owe me nothing We haven't spoken for so long Lord, I pledge my life to Thee I'm too unworthy, Lord, to come to You Could You please come down to me? I know that there are others Who can offer more than I I promise you I'd understand If for me you had no time I think I just hit bottom And I'm looking up to see I'm too unworthy, Lord, to come to you could you please come down to me? Oh, Lord, I think I've just hit bottom And I'm looking up, Lord Oh, Lord, to see To unworthy, Lord, to come to you 
good to be here tonight. I'm a blessed man. I'm telling you, I sit back here and just cry and just have myself a good time. And I just thank the Lord for what he's done for me. The devil tried to stop this ministry about 13 years ago. I was an alcoholic. I was at the bottom. I had lost everything I had. And uh, Satan had a plan, but God had another plan. <laughs> and I tell this story everywhere I go, and uh, I guess I'll continue to tell it. Sometimes people need to hear this. No matter what you're going through, no matter how bad it may look, you may have already counted yourself out, but he hasn't counted you out yet. I was running a little car wash in a little town called Beaver Dam, Kentucky. I was making a living uh, cleaning up cars. And uh, I was so messed up I couldn't stay sober and I was about to even lose my business. One day it rained. And you know people don't get their cars cleaned up when it rains. <laughs> I was sitting there on a little old couch thinking to myself, what a loser you are. You've let your family down. You've let God down. You've let the community down. You're not even worthy to live. And I felt that way. But all of a sudden, I heard something. I heard the sweetest voice that spoke to me. Some people say that the Lord doesn't speak to people anymore. You've come by too late to tell me that. He spoke to me, and he told me he loved me. And that minute, I fell on my knees in a mud floor, and I said, Lord, would you please forgive me? And if you'll forgive me, I'll live for you for the rest of my life. And I want to tell you, he put a brand new song in my heart, and I've been singing it ever since that day. Hey, I'm glad I'm saved. And I'm glad I know who Jesus is. Can we sing one together? When the reason that I'm standing stands in front of me, you better get out of my way because there's going to be a little shouting going on, I promise you. Every battle that I've 
Good to be here tonight. My sleep is gone, my heart is full of sorrow. I can't believe how much I've lived. I dread the pain that waits for me tomorrow When the sun reveals my broken dreams Scattered on the ground Please forgive me I need your grace to make it through All I have is you I'm at your mercy Lord, I'll serve you, yes, sir. until my dying day, and help others find the way out your mercy. Please forgive me. And take the time to care for no sinner born like me But you know I read in the Bible The old story How he prayed for mine and your forgiveness While he was dying on that old tree Please forgive me, yes Lord I need your grace to make good music yeah you know we 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 try to do different things we have uh, different uh, musicians on different people praise God mm -hmm. another thing is God put it in our life to meet these people and uh, at times different times uh, is, is his name Billy Williams is that him who who does choices we have I think we talked about this I think we, we were did. Up in, mm -hmm. in Branson and we were going up to see uh, the Jimmy Whites. Fortune. The yeah. Whites or Jimmy Fortune. Well, one of them, praise God. And uh, Billy just come walking through the tables there and everything, and uh, we were waiting to go in, and uh, <laughs> came to our table and just stuck up a conversation, and we talked and talked and talked. And, I mean, Lord, before we got, I knew more about him than he did. I mean, <laughs> he just told everything. And, and, nice guy, nice guy. A wonderful person. We enjoyed that so much. And but when you do the will of God, God will bless you. God wants to bless you above all things. But when you have sin in your life, it's not that God can't 
bless you. It's that he won't bless you. And the reason is he has given his word. He is not going to bless sin. So when we have sin in our life, then uh, in reality, you should not expect to be blessed. Mm -hmm. It's when you're living your life for the Lord and doing your best, and God understands when you're doing your best, and the thing of it is you grow in the Lord. Uh, so your best today uh, wasn't your best yesterday. That's true. When but you, you, you learn to do the things that allow God to bless you. Praise God. And that at night when you go to bed, praise God, ask the Lord, Lord, forgive me any sin that I've committed today. Praise God. I'm, because there are sins of omission that I didn't do, and I, and I should, praise the Lord, but with the knowledge that that renews me uh, every time that I do that. There's a song we used to sing, New Every Morning. Oh, uh, yeah. Praise God. Is it New Every Morning? New Every Morning. Okay, whatever it is, praise God. But when you wake up in the morning, you are a renewed mm -hmm. person. Yeah. from the night before, hallelujah, and you're starting fresh again, so uh, does God give you a second chance every morning, hallelujah, praise God, he gives me a chance to go forth and do the things, and when I do, I'm blessed, and when I don't, God withholds blessings, and let me just say this, and we're going to see this today, praise in Job, we're going to turn over to chapter uh, 42 of Job, and that's where we're going to begin today, praise God, because God withhold. That's God doesn't punish. God doesn't beat us down. God simply withholds blessings. And listen, if you don't have the presence of God in your life, you, mm. the devil's got open reign to come against you uh, and do what is best to destroy you. We need to get to the place to where we live our lives in such a way that the devil just says, well, ain't no use of messing with them. Yeah. I'll go find somebody else to mess that's with right. today. Hallelujah. And that's where God wants us, and that's where I want to be. Amen. Praise the Lord. I get tired of being sick and, and all these things that, that come that way. So let's, let's go over to Job. Once again, we're talking in Job 42. Praise God. And we're talking about Job's uh, self-judgment. Uh, praise the Lord. Self-knowledge and self-judgment. That we've got to, if if we know the will of God, mm -hmm. then we have the ability to look at ourselves and judge what we are doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Paul says to judge yourself daily. That's it. Yourself. Judge Am yourself. I doing the best I can for the Lord? Uh, Am I doing better today than I did yesterday? Because it takes a while to get rid of the flesh. Mm -hmm. it does, it's not like lightning hit you and burn it away because those fleshly desires are still there. And when Jesus talks about in Proverbs, or I'm sorry, Revelations, he talks about overcoming. Well, what are you overcoming? We're overcoming the things in our flesh that keep us from being blessed. Boy, isn't it a, what a merciful God we Amen. serve. Hallelujah. Praise God. Aren't you glad that Jesus Christ came and gave himself that you could be forgiven, praise God, for, for the things and to keep these things away from your life. So basically we're saying uh, in our lesson today, why do bad things happen to good people? Mm -hmm. uh, and... Well, we're going to see that as we go in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I'm going to ask Sister Carolyn uh, to read uh, in chapter 42, verse 1 through verse 6, if, if you would, Sister Carolyn. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything, and that no thought can be withholden from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak. 
I will demand of thee and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. Wherefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. Praise God. Let's go back up to verse 2 here for just a moment, praise God, because it's so important to know, to look at this. See, this is self-knowledge. Self-knowledge. Here, if, if you go back and you can read the whole book of Job, and, and it talks about Job was probably at that time the most righteous man on the face of the earth. That's right. Praise God. He was also, because of that righteousness, he was also the richest person mm -hmm. on the face of the earth. God blessed him because he was so close to him. God pointed him out. That's it. And, and see, that's if the, when you live close to God, you're going to be blessed. Uh, and when you live away from God, mm. you're not going to be blessed. I started to say you're going to be cursed, but when you know God and, and yet you still move away from him through ignorance, uh, God doesn't curse you. He just withholds the blessings. And, and that's important for us to know. You'll think you're cursed when he yeah, withholds well, them. That's right. when, yeah, all he's got to do is take his protective hand off of you. And when even the devil said, I can't do anything to Job because you're protecting him. Mm -hmm. And God said, well, let me just take the protection away. But, and you do what you please with him, but you can't kill him. Limited him. And God knew that Job would not yield to the devil. Job loved the Lord through all of the, the whole 48, other 48 chapters, mm -hmm. praise God. Uh, but he, he lacked understanding. And, and this is where oftentimes in the church we, we do things expecting God to bless us when what we do has absolutely nothing to do with what God wants us to do. That's true. I mean, I mean, we go in and I'm not going to go into what we think church ought to be, but so many churches today are self-serving. Yeah. Uh, where's the self-judgment? See, if you've got to know the Word of God, preachers need to preach, this is sin, this is not sin. Mm -hmm. This is where you're blessed, this is where you're not blessed. And even when they do preach Jesus, they just say, well, uh, receive Jesus Christ in your heart and you shall be saved. But it, they don't go into the fact that on a day-to-day -day basis, you have to s walk in that. Mm -hmm. It's not, well, gee, I'm saved now. I can just go sin and do what I please. Yeah. yeah right. I'm not telling you that you may not be saved, but I'm going to tell you this. You're going to miss the blessings in life because you're going to live according to your flesh. And, and that's a terrible place to be. Praise God. I want to be a spiritual Christian, not a fleshly Christian. Me Praise too. God. All right. So it says, I know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be withheld or withholden from thee. Mm. See, you may think that you're getting by with stuff, but God knows your thoughts. God knows your heart. He knows everything about you. You can't hide anything from God. And, and let's go another step. Oftentimes, people, when they get into church, when they, when they do accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, for, and you know, Carol, Sister Carolyn, you've seen this take place so many times, People get self-righteous, mm -hmm. and they judge other people according to their self-righteousness. And, and that's what Job is about. Job has all these people that are coming up, and, and they're saying, well, you must have done this, you must have done that. And Job said, no, I didn't. I mean, I'm, here I am, I'm, I'm a good man, I, and I... You see, and in and, and his own eyes, he was. But God had something else for Job, and Job had to, God had to show Job there's more to this than just confessing with your mouth. I can't get over how much they kept pushing him. You better confess. You've done something wrong. We may not know it, but God knows it. That's why you're 
in this mess. And, see, and that's basic, and that's what happens in church. And not only that, they'll stand up and tell everybody else in church, mm -hmm. well, the reason they're having problems over there is because of this, this, mm -hmm. this, and this. And God said, uh-uh, that's self-righteousness. You're judging somebody else by, by what you think. Praise God. When your brother's down, you should be sad. But if they're sad, you should pick them up. That's it. If they cry, cry with them, but then say, come on, let's get over this now. Let's, yeah. let's, let's fix it and together. I, I'm at that point. Oftentimes when I deal with people, I sit down with them. I said, let's go over your life. Mm -hmm. Let's go over your day. Let's, what is it that's, that's keeping you pinned down? Uh, and oftentimes that's to think, well, I just don't know. There ain't a thing in the world that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I said, well, let me talk to you for just a moment. Because let, let me show you what I observe in your life. And that doesn't mean that I'm judging them. No. I'm just showing them, here's what I'm seeing. And perhaps, maybe, that is what's keeping you from the blessings of God. That's how you help and your just, brother. Yeah. When I walk into a home, praise God, and I see objects that are idols uh, and due to ignorance that people have about these things, I understand immediately, well, no wonder you're having trouble. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the examples that I, I, I give is the fact that uh, I went into a home, people asked me to come in, and, and what's the matter? I mean, something's happening. So I went to their home. First thing I saw above their couch in the living room were pictures of geishas. Mm -hmm. uh, a geisha is a, is a Japanese prostitute. Excuse me, a lot of people, oh, no, it's just art. No, it's not. You have a picture of an idol, uh, and you, you've given it a place of prominence in your home. And God said, I'm, you know, you want me to bless you, and yet here you have this idol in your living room, and you obviously worship because you went and paid money for it, and you put it in a place of prominence. And so... Get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Get that out of your house. Praise the Lord. I, I, I see the same thing happening in many churches. Praise God. People, well, there's, oh, they're such wonderful singers. Uh, yeah, but what's in their life? I mean, more and more I'm seeing uh, gay people uh, leading the music, leading the praise and worship, and, and God said, I'm not going to have anything to do with that. Uh, th that just blocks everything. And that churches can't understand why they're not blessed. Praise God. So, and having said that, God knows every thought, and you cannot withhold anything from God. Now, verse 5 and 6, listen to what, let me say, For here I beseech thee, and I will speak, I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. Mm. All of a sudden, when all of this argument that's been going on with Job, all of a sudden it dawns on Job, wait a minute. I may be satisfactory to myself, but I am not satisfactory unto God. I need to sit down and judge myself. Yeah, I'm a rich man. Yes, I do all that. I keep the Sabbath. I do all these things that are wonderful in the eyes of God. But why do I do I mean, what's happening in my life? I am self-righteous. And that's what we see in so many people's life. They are self-righteous uh, in the ways of the Lord, and they judge others. We need to, first of all, judge ourselves. And listen to what he says. Wherefore, I abhor myself, I hate myself, and repent in dust and ashes. Paul, or, I'm sorry, Job is saying mm -hmm. that, I saw myself so great that I was as good as they could be, but when I saw myself through the eyes of God, mm. I realized that I was nothing. Only because of God's great love am I even here. Hallelujah. Okay. 
So, having said that, I want us to go over. Uh, brought into the presence of God, Job is revealed to himself. In no sense a hypocrite, but godly and possessing a faith which all his affections could not shake, Job was yet self-righteous and lacking in humility. Wow. And I think that's where we missed it. I want us to go uh, to Philippians 3. Philippians. Yeah. Philippians 3, 4 through 9. So Praise I'm God. Uh, I was looking also at um, where Job, I thought it was awesome that God said when he talked to, let me get this straight, Philippians 3 and what? 4 through 9. Okay, Philippians 3. Four. But what would you, what'd you start to well, say? Well, right here I was, <laughs> whenever God talk, talk was the devil approached God. And, God, and this is in Job chapter 1 and verse 8, And the Lord said unto Satan, as thou considered my servant Job, there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and ensueth evil. Now, God and Job thought, you know, I'm all right. Yeah. I'm just fine. Yeah. But, but God had that, something. Read that again. Uh, and Job and the Lord, said he was perfect. Yeah. Now, notice he's not saying, God is not saying here sinless perfection. No. He's saying that God, that Job is mature, mature in his righteousness. Because if he was perfect, then all right, he wouldn't have had to had wouldn't have allowed Satan to do That's what he it. did. That's it. But God wanted Job Not to learn something. Not perfection, and that we need to get over that, folks. Yeah. When when somebody in your church says, "Is anybody here perfect?" Yeah, I can stand up and raise my hand and say, "Yes, I am." Well, how how did you get to be so perfect? Because Jesus took away all my sin. Mm -hmm. I'm a child of the Most High God. Mm -hmm. Praise God. You're a mature I, Christian. That I'm maturing. I'm, I'm mature and I am maturing. Jesus said to strive to be perfect. That's right. Uh, and, okay. and that's not perfection. Perfect. That yeah. is to mature in understanding. And if you're mature, you can take instruction. That's right. And Paul and said over and over and over again, you know, they're always learning but never able to come to the truth. Because they're immature. They're not perfect That's Christians. It. Milk. Uh, That's they'll it. They'll stay milk the whole time. That's how I can tell a, a mature Christian from one that's not. That's it. If they can take instruction constructively and, and correction and work on that instead of being, oh, I got my feelings hurt. I'm leaving. That's it. Okay. Well, and they walk away and kill themselves. Yep. Okay. Uh, you wanted Philippians 3. Three, four through nine. Gotcha. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I am or circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. The what things we were gained to me those I counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is God by faith. So see, we hear, see wow. Paul here understanding the very thing that Job was Absolutely. talking about. Praise God. Though I might, see, I, though I might also mm. have confidence in the flesh. Mm -hmm. See, Paul is saying here, hey man, I've been, I've done the whole thing. I've been circumcised. I'm, uh, I'm a great person. I've done everything according to the law, but mm. I missed it. Yeah, I've done everything that I could that I could do, and so in my self righteousness, I stand before the Lord and say, "Well, where did I go wrong?" And God is saying, "Because you're standing on your righteousness, not on my righteousness. We are not saved 
by the things we do, we are saved because of the sacrifice what Jesus, Jesus Christ did. did at the cross. Praise God. And when we see that and receive it, we come to the understanding <laughs> that there is absolutely nothing that I can do to save myself. Mm -hmm. Nor can you. Salvation comes only, only through the sacrifice and the grace that Jesus Christ went to the cross Amen. for and God's great mercy. We're not out of time, are we? We got Praise the one Lord. minute and two <laughs> seconds. I'm sorry. But we're oh. not out of time. We got 59 seconds. All right. Well, <laughs> man, we hadn't even gotten started on this. Why would you look at his list of God. scriptures? He said we might be getting into it. We didn't yeah. get to the first one of this. <laughs> Let me just say this. Uh, in this, as Paul said, the problem is solved. The godly are affected that they may be brought to self-knowledge and self-judgment. That's why we separate things. Yeah. Things ain't going right in my life, Lord. Why? Well, because I live according to my righteousness, not yours. Praise God. That's Self-righteousness is death. Praise God. That's but true. the righteousness of God, hallelujah, brings on the blessing. Well, we're out of time once again. Praise the Lord. Remember, you, you shall, shall know, know the, the truth, truth and, and the, the truth, truth will make, make you free. free. God, God bless. bless. See you next week. Chance to be alive.